It's one of Ethiopia's holiest sites. Here, 11 medieval churches are carved straight out of the mountain. They were built in the 12th century AD by a Christian king called Lalabella. Legend has it that following the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, King Lalibela has a, a dream of rebuilding Jerusalem in Ethiopia. The this one word tabot stands out. Today it's synonymous with the ark and this sacred place of the church. And it's connected with this word teva, the Hebrew word for box. Rebellious Tigray forces have made major territorial gains. According to reports, Tigray rebels captured the North Ethiopian town of Lalibela from the government forces. Smith. Tonight in Ethiopia, Tigrayan rebels seize Lalibela, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the neighboring region of Amhara, famed for its 12th century rock-hewn churches. December 1st, 2021. The Amhara Special Force Fano and the Ethiopian Army liberated the city of Lalibela. Here's what they found, a glaring war crime. This is a delivery room that we are in now here in a health center in Lalibela. We were told by locals of the Lalibela area that during the TPLF occupation. Uh, here's what looks like medicine, lots and lots of medicine, thrown all over the ground, crushed, stepped on. We're in the pharmacy and it's been totally ransacked and all the medicine's gone. So appear to be some general records of the there's blood, there's blood like still in there. Lalibela is the greatest cultural, historical, and religious treasure of Africa. Tigray troops moved into the city in August of 2021, needlessly risking the holy sites for their narrow political goal. Many Ethiopians feared the worst. It was a close call. Tigray People Liberation Front desecrated the sacred place, a place for pilgrimage, devotion, and peace. Mosques were not spared. We were there Christmas Eve, when nearly 200,000 pilgrims rose to heaven on a path descending into the earth. Many walked for days or weeks, fasting, robed in white, an ordeal that is rinsed from the disciples in the tradition of Jesus. Airport, hospitals, hotels, ransacked. This is just the tip of the iceberg. As more cities were liberated, a shocking horror story start to come out. Horrific stories of gang rape of pregnant women, nuns, young girls. An 85-year-old nun was victim of a brutal rape. Some of them were raped in front of their children. Many women committed suicide. Unspeakable loss, suffering, and grief that would last for generations. <laughs> I 
Amnesty International has shed light on the horrific war crimes carried out by the Tigrayan rebels in Ethiopia. This includes sexual and physical assault on several women. The report says that Tigrayan rebels raped, robbed and beat up several women during an attack on a town in Ethiopia's Amhara region. A story of a father brutally murdered, protecting his pregnant wife and children from being raped. Human Rights Watch report. I have children, 10 and 2 year old girls. I was scared they might kill my daughter. I said, don't kill my children, do whatever you want to me. The youngest was asleep, but the older one was awake and saw what happened. I don't have the strength to tell you what she saw. After they raped them, TPLF fighters then looted their homes, stealing food, jewelry, cash, and mobile phones. TPLF fighters also subjected the women to degrading ethnic slurs. In some cases, TPLF forces told women they were raping them in revenge for the rape of Tigrayan women by federal government forces. Our viewers should understand these civilians had nothing to do with what happened in Tigray. They just happened to be Amara or Afar, their only crime. The attack was carried out at her home by an armed man in plain clothes speaking the Tigrayan language, she says, in an area under Tigrayan control. Mass graves were also discovered. in these graves are civilians. Some were killed as they left church. Tigray entered the neighboring Amhara and Afar regions. They pushed south so that by the end of November they were fighting near a town 118 miles from Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa. The scale of destruction of public and private property were unprecedented in the modern history of Ethiopia. The intentional destruction of vital infrastructure, schools, hospitals, industries, banks, government offices is beyond words. Universities, cultural centers looted and destroyed. የዚህኛው ግን የጦርነት የፈጠረው ውድመት አይደለም ይለያል በጦርነት መካከል ላይ በቶክስክ ለውውት በከባድ መሳሪያ ለውውት አከባቢዎች ተቋማት ሀገር ህዝብ ሊጎዳ ይችላል እነዚህ ግን ስራ ይብለው አጥንተው አስበው አልመው በከፍተኛ ጥላትነት ተመርዘው የጫኑትን በሙሉ ጭነው የቀረው አውድሞ ነው Even the animals were not spared. Medical equipment, including ultrasound machines and monitors, had been deliberately smashed and vandalized to render them non-functional. Ambulances, medical supplies, and equipments looted. Now, we estimate over 7 million Afars and Amaras don't have access to basic health care services. And Samint, man, Megwatam, Motatam, I chill in the bed, Nasubich and Burna Burt, the Yakam, Tasabi, and Miss Distasabi, Yababi Yakam, the Kayeta Chani here in the bed, who has a lot of factors with Amorganized Dino, Jemera, Balemua, Izoi Metal, Biomedical Engineer Ruchalacho, Specialist Haki Muchalacho.
The Mission of Dismemberment Years and years of records from schools, hospitals, and government offices were also intentionally destroyed. This photo says it all. Taking food from poor women with a baby. Her face tells a story of horror. The scale of devastation invokes the painful legacy of fascist Italia invasion in 1935. Fascist Italians indiscriminately carpet bombed many villages in Wolo and Shewa. A chemical weapon. Mustard gas bombs were used. Dejak Hailu Kebede was a descendant of the ancient Zagwe dynasty, who gave us the churches of Lalibela and veteran of the Battle of Adwa in 1896. When Italy invaded Ethiopia in 1935, he was once again in the front line to defend the motherland. In a short period of time, he managed to defeat scores of fascist and mercenary battalions. To punish the Welo Amaras, Italians dropped over 700 tons of mustard gas on innocent civilians. He was amongst the dead. Once vindictive fascists and mercenaries located his dead body, with utter cruelty, they cut his head as a trophy. His severed head was later sent to Rome for Mussolini and sadist fascists to enjoy. 18 of Italy's famous bombers took part in a raid upon Desi. Red Cross units that suffered, the tons of death that rained upon Mud Hut Palace and hospital alike, dealing out destruction and injury to the terror. The bombing of Desi by fascist Italians, here was how New York Times reported it in 1935. History repeating itself in 2021. By some accounts, the scale of devastation the TPLF inflicted dwarfs the fascist invasion. Saba was just three years old when she died of malnutrition. The deafening silence of World Health Organization chief Tedros Adhanom was not surprising. He was Tigray People Liberation Front Central Committee member. Over 10,000 health facilities, clinics and health care centers destroyed in Afar and Amara. He hasn't uttered a word. It's justified in his world. The moral depravity and vindictiveness are glaringly obvious. We wonder how a man can be a director general of World Health Organization without moral character, integrity, and ethics. He totally ignored the suffering of innocent civilians just because they are war with his ethnic group. Civilians are civilians. He rather used his position to lobby international organizations on behalf of the TPLF. Moving on, in the latest news, the Director General of the World Health Organization has been accused of supporting the Tigray state dominant political party, that is the TPLF. Ethiopia's military has alleged that Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has been trying to procure arms for the Tigray People's Liberation Front. This guy is himself part of that team. As you know, he is a member of the TPLF Central Committee. To know that the career timeline of the now Chief of World Health Organization Dr. Tedros has been serving in his current position at the WHO since 2017. But before that, he was a member of the TPLF's powerful executive committee. Side is the Tigray People's Liberation Front. They ruled Ethiopia for 27 years before Abiy Ahmad came to power. Now the Tigray People's Liberation Front has refused to recognize the Prime Minister's authority. And this has triggered a civil war. Dr. Tedros is a Tigrayan. 
In fact, he is the world's most high-profile Tigrayan. He was the health minister in the previous Ethiopian government that was led by the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Even as health minister, Dr. Ted Ross was not immune to controversy. This report came out when Dr. Ted Ross was contesting the election for Director General at the World Health Organization. He was accused of covering up not one, not two, but three cholera epidemics in Ethiopia. An Ethiopia's army chief has accused the Director General of the World Health Organization, Tedros Atamanjariesis, the country's highest profile Tigrayan abroad, of lobbying in favor of the breakaway region and helping to provide it with weapons. Tigray People Liberation Front had only one mission, inflicting as much pain and suffering as possible against innocent civilians who have nothing to do with the war in Tigray. Rule of engagement was clear. Kill, rape, loot and destroy. The TPLF leadership has said in their own words that one of their goals, one of their objectives is to exact revenge on the Amhara people. For just, just, <sighs> just a moment. So you are saying, just very yeah. briefly, thank you, uh, TPLF, sure. I and Amhara, because they want to exact revenge on Amara people. That's part of that's, it. That's, 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 that's part of it. Thing. All right, all right, that's because it, yes. we only and have the, we only have half an hour. Marza, why? What yeah. are TPLF doing in Amara, as far as you're concerned? Uh, first of all, it's not the TPLF; it's the Tigray Defense Forces, and they're Thank there in the order correction. to one, mm -hmm. yeah, in order to one to lift the siege that has been laid upon the people of Tigray by the Ethiopian government. Two, it's in order to force the Ethiopian government to come to a negotiation table and find a political sol solution to the ongoing genocide. So they're fighting the in Amara to find a political solution, right? Which, that which sounds, doesn't make sense. That doesn't that, make any sense to me. It does, it's a contradiction. It, it, right. it is in order. It it is. TPLF leaders never hide their intentions all along. <laughs> The U.S.-based Tigray Media House spewed hate for years and they got what they wanted. None of this happened overnight. Western governments, international organizations, including World Health Organization, United Nations, World Food Program, intellectually dishonest academics, unethical journalists, lobbyists, and Western media organizations have been priming Tigray People Liberation Front for almost a year to commit this war crime. Mirroring their respective government policy, major Western medias engaged in bogus moral equivalents and amplifying TPLF's false and inaccurate accusations and misinformation. Nima Albagar, Alex Deval, Martin Plot, and William Davidson used their positions to shape worldview on the Ethiopian civil war. Creating the evil Ethiopians versus superior Tigrayans narrative, giving a moral ground for TPLF to unleash nothing short of genocide against an innocent civilians. The Ethiopian government left Tigray in July 2021. The TPLF does not have any business to go into Amara and Afar and destroy their lives.
and I would say that the Tigrayan people and TDF and they're fighting not only for their own lives, they're fighting for the lives of their children and their parents and their collective security, which makes their fighting morale, I would say, probably quite higher than the adversary. I'm Ray Suarez from the PBS NewsHour, and I'm joined, of course, by Admiral Stavridis, from who we've just heard from, uh, to my left, and Gail Smith, Special Assistant to the President and Senior Director at the NSC. Hey, good day, everybody. It's uh, Jim Stavridis, the Dean at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, and I'm joined today by a friend and a colleague, Alex DeWall. Here was how Alex DeWall pleaded to Gail Smith in 2015 when Obama nominated her to head the U.S. aid to use her position to pressure TPLF. Those guerrillas we knew in the mountains of northern Ethiopia, ardent and idealistic, have been in power for almost a quarter of a century, still possess many of the characteristics of a military organization. Above all, they don't share power, they don't like free speech, and are almost impervious to advice, let alone criticism. No one in the Obama administration commands their respect like you do. Please use that influence to promote human rights and democratization. Know you had enormous respect for Meles Zenawi. 2020, for some mysterious reason, he became the supporter of TPLF. In span of 12 months, he wrote over 25 biased anti-Ethiopia opinion pieces in major international newspapers, cited as an Ethiopian expert at least 50 articles that vilified the fame Ethiopians. Intellectual dishonesty at its best. No moral character or integrity. He just went to the highest bidder. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Tigray, the only thing left actually for the National Defense Forces is to negotiate its surrender or withdrawal from Tigray. That is... The future of Ethiopia will for sure be very, very different to the past. That false dream of a revived empire will be buried for good. And members of the Tigray Defense Forces, you have won the respect of everybody. The doctrine of a just war has rarely had so clear an exemplar. I mean, that, that there could be an Afghanistan type... Well, we, we just... Unless I'm mistaken, it wasn't in his question. You just brought it up. No, I, I, you are correct. I, 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 so hear, I, I, we don't want there to be a misperception. Well, there that, wasn't one. Well, Matt, I, I, see, it, see, I, see, I, I pay pretty close attention to these kind of things, and I don't recall anyone. Matt, you're, you're sitting in the front row of, of at the Department of State. Yes. Uh, there may be Americans around the world uh, who, may, who may be Ethiopia under... Ethiopia is like Afghanistan, who, that who, the U.S. was at war for 20 years. Who may be under a... a and is withdrawing hastily. Our point, Matt, is that uh, these... Nobody these, has said this, except for you. Matt. Uh, <laughs> I don't get it. I, I know you have a, a perspective sitting there from the front row, but uh, we talk to American citizens all day, every and, day. And, and you think that, and, and there are, so you're saying that there are American citizens who are in Ethiopia right now who think that somehow I'm there's going to be a U.S. military evacuation of Americans from Ethiopia. I am saying we do not there? want there to be a misimpression uh, that but anything like what was undertaken in Afghanistan, uh, which, was, which was unique in history. Uh, <laughs> Here's State Department statement calling the mayhem and atrocities unconfirmed. The question arises, has the State Department, perhaps unwittingly, abetted a scapegoating narrative which singles out one ethnic group as perpetrators of violence and implicitly absolves other ethnic groups of the same atrocities, thereby fueling additional tension and conflict. What State should do is recognize who is committing the atrocities, who is the victim, regardless of who that implicates. During interviews with local TV, TPLF spokesperson mistakenly admitted that U.S. government asked TPLF to enter to Addis. We can't imagine what could have happened had TPLF made it to the capital, Addis Ababa. Now in China, I'm sorry to position him. I can understand. Has he... America am Addis Ababa at home, Zubin Nagar Zalong. Google in Europe, Addis Ababa at home, I didn't Nagar Zalong. Gindima, Booster Matai, Addis Ababa at home, Spain, Hoyn Hom Sugar Cow Fitter, Tosana Akuhom Akhahum Tatu. Has an America concern? Google it, I'm Mashaun, Tarana Shahat calculation. The video leaked in November. Senior U.S. government officials conspiring with Tigray People Liberation Front, Representative Prehane Gebre Christos. Uh, well, I do represent the government of Tigray at this moment. Uh, that's what I do. 
you know, the Tigrayans in yourself and uh, the leaders in Tigray have been very effective and as confident uh, as you are. And uh, uh, the fact that you could probably do an excellent job still. He is not listening at all right now. And, and how are you going to reach him? I, uh, I hope that uh, you have military success fairly soon because I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so very, very much, all of you. Amhara base, it exists nonetheless. And we have to do something about it. With troops now right outside of Addis, as you know, the evacuations have begun. Uh, that, that's a very alarming situation. And who forgets this moment? The coalition calls itself the United Front of Ethiopian Federalists and Confederalists Forces. They say if the government doesn't negotiate with them, they will attempt to dismantle it by force. Uh, the first step we have to take is to sign an agreement. My name is Mahmoud Ugas. I am from Somali State Force. It's a Gamilla people liberation. Yeah, our message to Biden. Maybe I should implement, I should compliment. Uh, definitely, my name is Brahana, B-E-R-H-A-N-E. -E. My second name is G-E-B-R-E, -E. then C-H-R-I-S-T-O-S. -S. Brahana, Gavrik, okay. Bra it's okay, I, I think you can hear me. I'm, with, I'm from Tigray. Uh, he expressed you know, concern because he said, looking down the list, he didn't recognize some of the names on the list. He didn't know some of these groups. He wasn't aware of how much support they had, either on the ground or they could provide material. The world has been fed a constant stream of anti-Ethiopian propaganda, presenting TPLF as moral, righteous victors, giving TPLF the license to kill, rape, loot, and destroy. It it's been since June that we have been promised by the U.S. State Department that they would issue a designation on whether or not this is genocide. The TPLF stain will haunt the U.N., UNESCO, WHO, WFP, and every enabler for decades to come.